Good, thanks, Adam. So, uh, I'm Neftos. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, um, I've been a contributor to KDE for uh, a couple of years now, and in the last two years, I've been a member of the KDE board, uh, where I mostly handle uh, community and uh, organizational issues. Uh, um, for my in my day job, uh, part of my day job at least is wor working and running with innovation programs where I help uh, startups uh, getting their ideas into prototypes and into MVPs and they can then take out in the market and if things go well then they can go start fundraising. So this is part of my inspiration for choosing this topic. And also uh, another part of uh, why I chose this topic is because I see more and more of our products growing and many potential candidates to burst out of the KDE bubble, burst out of the uh, FOSS Linux tech ecosystem bubble, which is great. And I think we have a lot of potential ahead uh, going forward. So we're, we may be talking about three things in this talk, uh, products, try to define them and figure them a bit out, um, bubbles, what they are, how I see them working in KDE in our ecosystem, and then trying to figure out ways that we can break out of them um, moving forward. Uh, so let's get started. Um, so products first. Um, depending on where you stand and what pers perspective you take, uh, there are various, let's say, definitions of products uh, across the web. Um, I chose the one from the Scrum Guide because it's closer to what we do, uh, software development and delivering these kind of products. So in the Scrum Guide, uh, a product card is defined as a vehicle to deliver uh, value. So you're developing something that in the end uh, has, is useful to someone out there. Um, so uh, to further define that, a product needs to have clear boundaries so it's not something uh, random and uh, that keeps changing. It has non-stakeholders, people working on it, people interested in it, and it has a well-defined type of user or customer if you're selling that. Um, now, on the nature of the product, it could be a software application as we develop, it could be a service that you offer, it could be a physical product, product maybe a phone, a laptop in our case, or it's something even more abstract. So uh, it can get various uh, characteristics depending on how you approach it. Um, trying now to narrow it down a bit in KDE's case, what we we'll say are our products. This is what I came up with. Feel free to share uh, in the chat if something I missed or you thought of something else. Uh, for example, we have applications, lots and lots of applications. Some of them, we group them into, into groups. Uh, KD Gear com comes to mind, KD Gear Mobile also. So those can be considered to some extent products on their own as groups. We have things like the framework, so de development frameworks uh, package uh, of uh, frameworks to, uh, that help developers and are targeted at them. We have things like the Plasma and Plasma mobile environments that are a specific niche of their own. Um, we have, of course, hardware devices like phones and laptops that we uh, get to the market through our partnerships with other organizations and companies. Um, we also offer a wide a variety of services. We might not be developing these products, but we do offer them to users and they will come to us about issues they have with them or uh, the experience with them, like this big loop button instance, like we have GitLab on event, we have the matrix uh, chat um, service. So all these are in some way things we offer to our community. And uh, arguably you can also include events in these type of products. Uh, Academy, LAS, uh, our major flagship events uh, are things that we could be thinking as a product because we have sponsors for them, we have users for them, we have people that are uh, watching and find value in the participating. So these are the various products. You, you can already see that we have a wide range of products and types of products in KDE, and this is very good, but also challenging. Um, trying to figure out how to approach this, I came across this complete product experience as uh, Brian De Haaf calls it. 
in his book. So I think it's valuable and uh, you can see here the various sections that are involved in uh, developing a product in a more complete way. Uh, we have marketing, we have sales, we have technology behind the product, we have all the supporting systems that help deliver uh, this product to, to the users. We have all the third party integrations that our product needs to work with. We have the support for our users, uh, policies, of course, that uh, define how we develop our product and how do we deliver our product. We will get into a bit more details uh, into uh, the, uh, the next section of uh, this presentation to try and figure out what each of these involves. So let's move in into the bubbles. What's a bubble now? Uh, a bubble, as you know, might mean a lot of things, but in the way we uh, use it in this presentation, uh, it can be these two uh, definitions that I chose. One is it can be a situation in which you only experience things that you expect or find easy to deal with. So let's say a familiar place that you are uh, accustomed to. And it can also be a group of people who have a lot of contact and interact with each other. They have maybe similar views, or at least they align on some aspects, but this group of people have, has limited contact with people outside this group. So they interact a lot with each other, they do things a lot, a lot of things together, but they don't uh, interact with other groups. So these are the two definitions of bubble that I find are relevant to what we do, uh, to what we do in this talk here. So trying to figure out the bubbles that are involved in what we do as a community and as KDE, uh, I came up with this. If I miss something or uh, you find something else, again, feel free to share it. Uh, I'll be happy to discuss more on it. So I guess most projects start uh, from a single person or that decides to work on something. Then this grows into a team or they might sometimes start as a team as well as some people gather together and decide to work on things. Then this team grows into a community for the purpose of this talk, I put KD here, but this can be any major community around the product. What by, I mean by a community is that you now start having multiple teams around, uh, the, around uh, the products and working each other, developing products in parallel on various fronts. They need to come together under one umbrella. So for our purpose, this umbrella is KD, and depending on your uh, use case, it can be something else. Then outside of KDE, we have the whole open source ecosystem. Uh, this can be, uh, this can be uh, all, all of our network that involves the tech community, the Linux maybe community, the open source community in general. And of course, the big bubble uh, that we all want to break out from is to go out and reach the wider world. Uh, I guess part of the values of doing open source is about reaching and bringing the advantages of it into the wider community, into the whole world. So um, uh, these are the five bubbles that I will take into consideration for the, uh, uh, for the next slides and for the next part of my presentation. So let's quickly go over a few of, uh, of these bubbles and see what they look like and what are the major challenges that I at least uh, thought about. Um, so when you are working solo, uh, you're most likely scratching your niche and you're developing, maybe in a lonesome way, you are developing by yourself um, a product or an application or something that you work on because you want to solve something for yourself. Um, the good thing about this is that, uh, this is a major advantage I see, is that it's easier and faster to make decisions, implement changes in, in the whole the development is just yourself and your product and you uh, grow it the way you like. Um, of course, there are some challenges here because you're alone, so there's always the bus factor. If something happens to you, your product is uh, is probably dead or if you have publicized it somewhere, maybe somebody picks it up, but it depends on the work you have done to get this product out and more people to learn about it. So that's an issue. Your product is still not independent from you. Another issue is quality. If you're working alone, there's not many eyes looking at your code, recommending changes, improvements, and things like that. So uh, that might be also an issue as your product grows. And of course, you have limited resources because it's just you. There's only a certain uh, 
uh, things that you can do within your day, within your time. So that's also a limitation. Now, as you grow and you manage to attract people around your product and around yourself, maybe if you're the main maintainer, you need you start basically building a team. Um, this brings many positives with it. For example, every team, new team member will probably bring their own additional skills that might vary from yours, or they can be similar to yours, but from a different perspective, or maybe they can be dropping replacements for you, which increases the passive factor. You also now have uh, more resources that become available, so you can utilize those in order to grow your product. Um, you now need to start thinking about the relationships, building relationships between people, handling relationships between people, and you also start need to start thinking about communicating between the team and how you set up the proper channels in order to achieve that. Um, of course, all this brings with it an increased potential for your project to grow even further. The challenges here is that new people, they do bring uh, skills and resources in, but they also bring their own ideas and their own demands. So as people contribute more and more to your project, project they want to have a say in the decision making, they will be proposing things, they will be demanding things from you. So this changes a bit the balance of, uh, of the processes. Um, this is why you need to start defining these processes, how you make decisions, how you collaborate on code, how you get things out to users uh, and in public. So all these processes need to be start uh, need to start being refined. And of course, uh, as your team grows, you need to start thinking about collaboration to pro to set up proper infrastructure so you can collaborate on various tools. These are usually simple in the beginning, but as you grow bigger, they get complicated. So coming now back to the community aspect of it, uh, in the case of KDE, what does it look like? What does it look like? Um, so if you have reached this stage of having, uh, let's say, an umbrella community uh, for your products, then you're probably part of an organization like KDE, like KDEV, that can support you and your product. When I say organization, it doesn't have to be necessarily a legal organization, but it's a structure that has specific processes, specific procedures, rules, and all sorts of things. So for this kind of complexity to work, you need to have this set in place. So uh, at the same time, you'll get lots of support from other team members, from other community members, uh, and especially from other specialized teams that are around would be looking on how KDE, through its specialized teams, can help your product uh, uh, at the next uh, section of this presentation. Um, also, usually in this kind of, uh, of communities, there will be infrastructure in place that can help you scale. So uh, other people will be working for you in order to have things in place that will help you grow. And uh, of course, it's a very good opportunity because usually these communities will ship products in a more generic way. It's, very, it's much easier for you to get your product by default into more distribution channels. Maybe it's, if there are maybe distributions like OSS, they can ship your product together if you choose so. Uh, the challenges here are, of course, as I mentioned before, the complexity increases a lot. Uh, you need to start abiding by community rules. You need to follow the procedures, not set by you anymore, but from the wider community, you can, all, can of course affect them and work to change them, but still you need to do it in the spirit of the whole community. So you need to be using uh, specific tools as well that the community has already chosen, maybe. Uh, it, this will also ex ex expose you to criticism, when I say criticism, like evaluation from are the other teams. So if you're working with other teams, it means that the other teams might have a say on the way you do things in your own team. And they might uh, propose different ways of doing things and might say this is wrong or this is right and things like that. And a major challenge to grow outside of this bubble of, uh, let's say, the community of the KDE uh, community is like getting users from non-KDE focused uh, systems or ecosystems, so people outside of our bubble, uh, to use products that are in KDE. So this will get you into the next uh, bubble where people that are not maybe 
enthusiasts of KDE products or maybe adopters of a KDE product in general will start using them. So now you have breaking into the open source ecosystem, maybe Linux if you want to call it ecosystem uh, in general. Here you will find a growing community of users and contributors that you can leverage to your advantage. You will have much more increased visibility in the FOSS ecosystem. You might have people uh, reaching out to you. You might have, um, uh, uh, you might be featured in various uh, tech uh, news sites and things like that. Um, this usually means that your project now starts not being maybe a, a playground. Um, so this means you need to take it a bit more seriously. When you are under the umbrella of maybe one organization, one community, you could maybe not treat it so seriously or maybe not putting so much effort in. Now you're exposed to the whole ecosystem. You have uh, people coming to you with questions, with demands and things like that. Uh, also, this increases the possibility for new sponsors, new fundraising to take place because now you have all the false ecosystem uh, available to you. Uh, what are the main challenges here? As I'm, uh, uh, we saw earlier, the need for integration. So if you're working with the whole ecosystem, you now need to actually be working with the whole ecosystem and the products it delivers. So you need to start thinking about how you can integrate with other products, with other desktop environments, with other distributions, with other platforms. Uh, so uh, this, is, uh, this is an important thing to take in mind as you will be getting requests to get your product on this or that uh, platform. Uh, another important challenge is to get your product to ship by default in many of these distribution channels. So get your product included in maybe a distribution or get your product included into a store or things like that where people would be exposed to it without maybe knowing too much about your product, but that would be a great opportunity to learn. Um, and of course, through this, you also need to increase your distribution channels, as I mentioned, to get your product in more places where people can download it. So if you manage to break out of that bubble, then you now have the world at your feet. Uh, what does it mean? It means that you have a leading place in a way potential for growth. Um, you can grow exponentially as users now don't have to be maybe technically oriented. Users don't have to be force oriented. They don't have to be open source enthusiasts. Uh, for example, they might just be enjoying what you do and don't know anything about the force background behind this. So uh, your, your opportunity to grow now, it's huge. Um, you ask, your product now is part of the market. It's part of the whole market of applications and other products that are uh, in the wild. So you, you, you are in a direct competition with them, which can be a good and a bad thing, but it will definitely help if you approach it the right way, it will help you grow and improve. Uh, there are increased opportunities here to attract revenue, so you can maybe make your product uh, more sustainable. And by now, if you've reached this, this uh, stage you need, you have probably reached a stage where you have already set up maybe some sort of organizational structure behind you uh, for your product specifically, because the growth for it and, and its potential would probably need this kind of backing and support. What are the challenges here? Well, being part of the whole world is, uh, means the market is, uh, that is available means that the competition is fierce. You have to keep up with everything the competition does. Your users will be exposed to what others are doing and there will be a constant demand, maybe for new features, maybe for increased quality in some aspects of your product, increased security and all those uh, topics. So you need to follow the demands of the market, the demands of the, let's say, modern user. Um, something also worth considering is that as your product growth, you probably need to start thinking that fundraising is maybe inevitable because it looks like it, can, it will be a necessity in order to continue growing. Um, as you, our demands are growing and you want to satisfy them and you want your product to grow, you probably need to hire people to work more dedicatedly on your product. And of course, by having all this organizational structure we discuss about, you need to start be thinking on things like hiring, the logistics behind all these, taxes, legal stuff, and all that. So these are major challenges, but hopefully they are good challenges because you have reached a stage now that you can grow even further. So uh, 
just to try and uh, let's say understand a bit better where we place ourselves, um, I prepared maybe this exercise to try and figure out where in these bubbles you probably pl place some of our products. Since we're already talking about the KDE community, it doesn't make sense talking the team and the solo projects, but of course we have the KDE ecosystem, the FOSS ecosystem and the world. So maybe if I can pick some of them, I will not do all of them. I just share some of them here that might fit in these three sections. Feel free to choose your own. Or if you are a maintainer of an application, do try and start thinking about where you fall into these bubbles and if you want to move into the next bubble and which bubble would be that one. So for example, we have things like Plasma that one could argue that it's, it's maybe grown outside of the KDE bubble, but maybe most of users using Plasma are KDE enthusiasts anyway, because they are part of our ecosystem. So it, I would place it more into KDE and less into the FOSS ecosystem, but it's still there. And of course, people in the FOSS ecosystem know about it. Uh, Krita, as we all know, has broken out of the FOSS ecosystem and has is one of our maybe success stories. And into the world, uh, uh, you, they have uh, users from outside of the FOSS ecosystem. They have users that don't know much about FOSS, they just know it's a good application and they want to use it, which is also good. And it can be an introduction to what is the, what is the FOSS ecosystem, what are its values, and um, what, what are its benefits for these users. We have things like Plasma Mobile that, okay, it's part of the KD community, but it's now shipping on hardware, which means people from the FOSS ecosystem are buying this hardware without necessarily buying it because it has KDE product on it, but because they're interested in the hardware itself. So I would say that Plasma Mobile is starting to be more in the FOSS ecosystem and growing and breaking out of the KDE bubble as it's progressing. Same for the Plasma Mobile apps around it. Um, projects maybe like Scanlight are still limited to the KDE ecosystem. Things like Dolphin, they ha I think there were attempts to grow it a bit further in the past, but it's usually used by people in the KDE ecosystem. Things like Kaden Live has seems to be having growing momentum around it. So it has definitely breaking into the FOSS ecosystem bubble, and it looks like it's a very good candidate to break into the world uh, bubble or the world market, if you want to um, um, call it like that. Things like GCompre, we know it's being used in schools in India from children and educators. So it has already broken out of the of the FOSS ecosystem and into the world. So. Uh, more and more of this, you can maybe think maybe KDP is something that is within KDE, but it could break out into the FOSS world. Kirigami is already being used by people outside of KDE to develop some apps. It, the potential there is a, a much bigger, definitely, and it can grow to the FOSS ecosystem. Feel free to choose your own app and do this exercise. I'm just sharing some examples here. So when we're talking about breaking out of our bubble, uh, let's think of some ways that can help push our products into this. Um, so one of the, like I've, I've shared here are some key aspects of that could help your product grow outside of this bubble and scale into the world. Uh, one thing I came up with is like, you can start offering a unique solution to an, ex to an existing problem. So if you're breaking through these bubbles, it means like there are problems that your application is solving or you are responding to a growing demand in a very specific niche. So your application is now uh, delivering a very good product that people are using and they're interested in using, not just because they're enthusiastic about KDE or about open source, but because they're enthusiastic about your specific application. It probably means you are delivering high quality software that corresponds to the modern environment of users. So if you're breaking out, if you want to break out from force into the world, maybe you need to start thinking about what others are doing out there, see how they design their products, how they deliver their products, and see how you can match that and maybe even grow further than that. It usually means that you have already figured out your user interface, you have made it into a friendly one, into something that uh, is more modern and people are uh, tend to expect where and what to find there. It also means that you are already busy building an also user experience for your users. So you have a community growing around you. You are building a, a community of users. You are building a community of, of developers maybe around you, and you're offering them a, a great user experience from the time they join you as users 
and then getting involved in your community, getting support and things like that. These are things that are required to break into uh, other uh, more bigger bubbles. Of course, you will need to raise awareness around what you are developing so you can uh, further support it, uh, get people to learn about it, get people to uh, adopt it. This is something I think Paul also mentioned uh, in the talk about how promo can be used as a service in KDE. So getting people to know about what you do is the first step for them adopting it and then growing out of battles. Bubbles and of course uh, creating a partners network as you progress through this ecosystem, through this ecosystem and through these bubbles is very very important. It will help you to be introduced to the market. It will help you gain extra support and validity of what you do as you find the right partners to push into these bubbles. So going back into the framework I talked about earlier, let's try and see how we can maybe match what I uh, mentioned now as what you might be doing right with each of these, let's say, sections of the complete product experience. So if we are talking about policies, um, then we need to, what this involves usually is things like licenses. Is your community uh, using some specific license? Is your product part of a community that has a specific code of contact? What are you doing with decision making, as I mentioned earlier? And what are the development processes set in place? So all these are policies that in order to break out into these bubbles, you should probably have in place as you go forward and as you grow, or if you are interested in growing forward, in going forward and growing. Um, another thing about um, uh, support, you need to be offering, as I mentioned, great user support. This can be done with community building through your uh, community of users. This can be done with uh, onboarding. You need to offer a great experience to people when they're joining your product so they can be attracted to it and you can lure them in, turn them into contributors and uh, can turn them into regular, let's say, developers or other types of contributions. Backtaging is also something, back support. You get people to test your products and support them in figuring out the issues. All these are things that need to be put in place for your product to grow. Third party integrations. Uh, in our case, maybe in KDE's case, in KDE's case, we need to think about integrating with desktop environments. So if you are developing an application that you want users outside of maybe Plasma or Plasma Mobile to be using, so you need to start thinking how these applications play uh, plays and if it plays well with other desktop environments or other types of environments, maybe on mobile. So you need to figure out these in, in integrations for your app. This also means that you need to figure out integrations for other operating systems. If you want your application to ship into things like the Windows Store or the Apple Store or uh, Android and things like, like that, then you do need to start thinking on how you can prepare your application in order to reach that audience. And even more, if your application is shipping, or maybe it's not application, but your product is shipping on specific hardware, you need to make that your software work very well with that hardware so you can reach that market, so you have happy users, so you can find partners if you are not yourself um, doing hardware stuff. Uh, talking about supporting systems, uh, here we're talking about having release management uh, processes in place, taking advantage of system administration resources, so you have uh, people managing that, you have your code repositories, you, have, uh, you can collaborate on code in the, in the public, you, you do your packaging for all these stores we mentioned earlier, or, or these supporting systems and actually things that usually happen behind the scenes that support you to deliver your product into users. And users are not usually aware of them, but they are there and they are offering a great experience to them, uh, to you for delivering your product. Of course, technology is key in what we do, uh, for your product to grow, it needs to be building in, uh, new features. It needs to be uh, to be introducing new stuff so it can keep momentum going to users, get them um, building, uh, you know, uh, expect, get them to expect new stuff, wait for your new release, see what's new, uh, get the word out about it. You need to be delivering high quality software, as we mentioned earlier. So people can uh, appreciate the stability of your uh, of the uh, your application of the software you're delivering. You need to be innovative, try to figure out things that 
Uh, others, uh, others from the competition are not doing, trying to see how you can differentiate your product, what are the special, unique uh, selling points of your product that you can get out to users to differentiate it from them. And of course, the whole user interface and experience we talked about earlier all fall under this technology uh, section. Getting into sales, in maybe most of our cases in the open source world, we are talking, I'm not talking, when we talk about sales, we are talking about adoption. So because we do offer much of our software for free. So when we are talking about sales, we are talking about adoption, how many users are using our software, what kind of users are using us, our software and all that. Um, of course, as things uh, uh, grow and as our product grow, we get donations. So that's part of sales. You need if you're doing great products, people will come to you and they want to donate to you. So uh, that's uh, part of the sales path. Um, app stores that in KD we increasingly want to get more products into more app stores and in then into more users. So they can also generate revenue and also hardware partnerships can generate revenue. So. As you see, as open source products grow, you need to start thinking about these kind of things that maybe weren't thinking when your product was part of a smaller team or a smaller community. This will also allow your team and your project to grow. And finally, when we talk about marketing, it's of course about promoting your product, raising awareness around it. So people in order to adopt your product, they first need to learn about it. They first need to learn about these advantages, how it compares to other stuff. So marketing will help you uh, create more content about your product that it will inform users. Uh, it will get the momentum going on social media, it will get people talking about your product, discussing about your product. And this will definitely, if you manage it well and you manage to harness that potential, then it will definitely help your product burst out of these bubbles. So having talks about these bubbles and what you should expect and the characteristics maybe of each of them, let's see of various ways that KD can help you with your product. So uh, when I started thinking about what, what are the teams that are specialized in the KD community, I didn't actually realize that we have so many types of various specializations and they're all active and they can all help you with your product. So we have teams like the promo team that can help you get the word out on your product. If you are not using them, reach out to the promo team. They will be happy to assist you to get, give them work, give them things to work on uh, to, to promote your product in the bubbles that are outside of what you are currently. You can reach out to the visual design group to get information and get um, support and guidelines on how you should be designing your UI, your user experience as a total. Uh, if you haven't reached out to them, to reach out to them because you can get help there. If you have an old website, reach out to the web team. Maybe they can help you modernize your website, make it more efficient, make it more uh, uh, having a call to action, get people to download your product. Um, the, we have a documentation team that can set up processes so you can get more people involved in your uh, maybe development uh, and things like that. So. I can get on, like, I, you, I think you get the picture here. You have KD Network that can help you. It's already doing amazing work in getting uh, KD products into public institutions, universities, and things like that. If your product can, is interested in reaching that market, then do reach out to them. Things like the Basquad can help you, like, with your quality control and quality assurance processes. Reach out to the Basquad and get them to look at your bugs. Translating to your product into other uh, languages, also very, very important in order to grow out of your language bubble, maybe, and if there are language barriers. Um, we have various platform specific groups nowadays. We have people that can help you get your product on Windows. You can have people that can help you get your product on Android. We have people that can help you uh, build bundles for your applications so you can deliver them as flat packs, snaps, all kinds of things. So. Do some research around, reach out to these communities. I think there's lots of value there that most KD projects are not harvesting at this point and we should be doing more. Um, we also have things like uh, the KDEV and the KDEV board. Uh, there people can help you with maybe the logistics, maybe with some fundraising stuff. We have the working groups. Um, feel free to reach out for uh, recommendations or maybe more administrative tasks. 
And of course, don't forget about all the enthusiasts and the early adopters you have around your project. Um, they are a specialized team of their own. They can help you get the word out. They can help you maybe in all the things I mentioned above uh, based on their skills. So make sure you're uh, reaching out to them and you're making the most of them. So these are all the things I could think of, but it's very, very important here to stress that your bubbles might vary. Uh, they might vary on a personal level. They might vary on a professional level. They might vary on the bubbles that you want to reach into. So um, don't take what I said as something that is like definite. Feel free to start thinking about what the bubbles you are facing or you are experiencing are and how you can uh, grow it out of them. Um, in addition to that, uh, bubbles, as I think about them at least, uh, can take various forms and meanings. So uh, just by spending some time on it, I, I found these four or five different ways of thinking about bubbles. They might be like a cozy, familiar place we feel safe and comfortable in. So we can stay there and focus and be productive on the product we're developing by doing things we enjoy and know well, and we don't need to worry about growing complexities and things like that. So maybe that's a thing we enjoy, but at the same time, it might be keeping our product back. So maybe we'd start, need to start thinking about other things, if we are at least interested in growing out of this bubble. A bubble can also be a, a control situation, maybe a, like think of it as like a hardware that allows us to uh, experiment, learn, take the time to prepare our path for growth. So maybe you have entered the KD community, you have been here in a while, maybe now you have a safe place around you, a community to support you, and you have now some time to start thinking and set up the processes on growing. So if you reach all these communities, there are the teams, as I mentioned earlier, you can now start growing even more. Uh, another way to think of a, of a bubble is like a platform that it enables you to validate your product. So when you join a community, when you join, uh, and an ecosystem and you offer your product, you can check if there's demand for it. As you grow into the larger bubble, maybe you find some limitations of what you're doing and you need to adjust or adopt accordingly. So you, you get to test and validate your product and try again so you can make the next step. So this is something a bubble can offer to you. Or a bubble can also be a milestone that you have set up. It's a goal that you have set up and you want to achieve and you can use it to need to reach your next target. You maybe want to grow out of three bubbles, but you can't make that jump. So you need to go through all the bubbles. So every bubble is a major milestone for you that will help you to reach your goals. And finally, bubbles can also be maybe a small prison, if I can call it that, a small barrier or a hell door that you will have to try and overcome if you are interested to continue growing your products, to continue growing the team around it and investing into new bubbles. So, to conclude, uh, oh, I see we got the circle there as an icon change, but anyway, um, I would like to get you to think about, uh, uh, as I wrap up, what are your bubbles? What are your, the bubbles that you're growing your product in? What are the bubbles for you as a person? Uh, what are the bubbles of the team or the project you are involved in? Um, are you thinking about breaking out of them? And if yes, do you have a plan? If not, why not? Uh, have you considered that? Or it is it something that you just never thought about? And maybe what's the next bubble you want to reach? Do you have this in your mind? Are you working toward that? What are you doing currently in order to burst out of your bubble and grow? That's it for me. Um, I'm happy to see we still have two minutes. If somebody has any questions, Feel free to reach out of me uh, to, to me to discuss more things about uh, products and growing them. And maybe if I can offer some advice or discussion, I'll be very, very happy to. Hi, Adam. Hi, thank you very much for the talk. Uh, no questions so far from the audience here, but I, I do have one, maybe, sure. maybe a strange one. Is Academy in a bubble? Oh, I've never thought of it, but it seems like you thought about it. So what are your thoughts about that? <laughs> the, well, Academy is kind of meant to be in a bubble, right? It's the yeah. main flagship KD event. From time to time, we do host people from outside the community, but it's mostly for our community. But maybe 
Uh, last is an opportunity for KD people to expose themselves to the whole force ecosystem, which is what uh, I was uh, talking about earlier, so the next bubble. So maybe that is an opportunity to grow even further. So it's great that we have also last for people interested to show, of course, it's focused on the apps ecosystem, but still we have many apps. If you are working on that, yeah, last is a good opportunity. And Academy, of course, but I think, yeah, that's a bubble that we more or less want to keep. <laughs> and it's more conscious uh, as a decision to give it like that. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, and I think the, the audience here also is agreeing and, and uh, lots of applause for your uh, talk. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm happy and I hope people enjoyed it.